What's up YouTube, Mike Dakota here. Today we're gonna go over the next problem of the previous contest that just ended about 30 minutes ago. But yeah, uh, <laughs> it's uh, two, two, four, four minimum rounds to complete all tasks. Um, this problem actually took me an hour to figure out. Actually, more than that actually. I think I solved this like at the last nine minutes of the contest. But which is surprising though, but yeah. Okay, so you're given a zero indexed array called tasks, which represents the difficulty of a task. And in each round, you could complete either two or three of the tasks of the same difficulty level. Return the minimum number of rounds required to complete all the tasks or negative one if it's not possible. Okay, so let's actually just like uh, go over, explain like the first task case. Cause I know like, uh, this might be hard to understand. So if we, if we go through here, okay. So let's just copy this. So these are our tasks, right? Two, 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 three, three, four, 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 four. Okay. So they are saying that we can complete either two or three tasks of the same difficulty level. So that, what that means is like, so we have two, 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 three, three, four, 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 right? So if I want to complete the task difficulty of level two, right? I could either cross out two of these, right? Right, and that'll be like one round because I cross out two of them or I could cross out um, three of them, right? So cross out three of them, right? Three of the twos and that'll be one round, okay? So you guys understand what I'm just doing, right? And then, um, yeah, so that'll be one round. So we plus one for that one round. And then um, for three, I could cross out either three of the three the threes, right? Or two of the threes. So because there's no three, like there's no three threes, I only could cross out two of them, right? Because there's, there's only two of them here. So I'll just cross out two of these threes. So then that adds another one for the number of rounds. So then I'm, I'm at four, 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 right? These last part. Um, so yeah, I could cross out th uh, three of the fours first, right? So I could do one, two, three. So then that adds another round. And then, um, then I could cross out the last two fours. So cross out these and adds another round. So in the end we get like one plus one plus one plus one four. Okay, so this would be the minimum amount of rounds necessary to, to complete all the tasks, right? Because four would be the minimum number of rounds to complete all the tasks. Because, uh, yeah, we complete all the tasks and that's the smallest number of rounds it would take. Now, the reason why this is the smallest number of rounds it would take is because uh, it just we it, it just took <laughs> the smallest number of rounds to take. Um, if you if we had done something else like instead of crossing out three but we cross out two every single time so actually you can't even do that in this case but let's say there was no this four right we technically could just cross out two again and then two again and that'll be like and then another two uh two uh, assume let's let's say there was another four here then we cross out two again that'll be like plus three and then with all the rest of the three here that'll be like six Right. Remember before we had like, th uh, I think three other rounds prior here. So yeah, that's why it's, that, that, that's not a good idea. Okay. So how do you do this problem? Okay. So actually let's explain task number two first, because, um, yeah, the second, not task number two, the, the second test case first before we explain how to do this problem. So we have two, three, three, three. Um, this is gonna return negative one because it's not possible. And the reason why is because let's say I cross out three, right? So I cross two of the threes out. So then that's one round, but then I'm left with just one, two. And remember we only could cross out three of the same kind or two of the same kind, right? So here we can't cross out three of the same kind or two of the same kind because two is just by itself 
So it's impossible. We can't cross the two out. So the answer is just minus one. Okay. So that's the gist of that. So um, how do you do this problem? Um, the simple matter of fact is that uh, we could use a greedy algorithm. And um, basically greedy algorithms are just explaining like the best chance you could do at the local time. So as you can see here, we have like numbers two, three, and then four, right? Um, once you see this problem, you could actually think about what we need is like an actual frequency array because remember we're crossing out two or three tasks of the same difficulty level. So instead of actually like just crossing these part, uh, each of these out and then like re like reshape the whole array, easiest way is to actually create like a frequency table of each of the numbers. And then, then we could just like subtract how many we're getting rid of instead of actually, you know, removing them from the array. So if we build a frequency table, so let's say how, let's say, um, number two, how many, how many, uh, number twos are there here? Well, there's three of them. So we're just going to put three, right? Um, how many threes are there here? Uh, well, there's two threes, right? One, two. So we're just going to put two here. And how many fours are there? There's one, two, three, four, five. So we're going to put this five. Okay. So these are the different uh, frequencies, right? Um, I, guess I should say like number and then frequency, but I hope you guys understand. So the right five is like the, the one on the right side are all the frequencies of each of these numbers. Okay. So now, um, Remember, in each round, we could either complete two or three tasks of the same difficulty level. Okay, so because we want the minimum number of rounds, um, it's actually better if we take three tasks first all the time, right? Because if we pick two of them, like if we just remove two every single time, we would have more rounds to take to, to remove, right? Like if I'm at so let's say I want to remove all the values of five, right? So let's say I remove like, try to remove twos from this five. So I, I remove two of them. So like, uh, so here I'm going to remove two of these. So I remove four, so minus two. This is going to be three of them are left, right? So then this would count as one round, right? Because I that was one round of subtracting two. Then I have to subtract another two here. And then this one minus two. And give me one. So that's another round. And then if I had more here, I would subtract another two here. But let's say for the sake of it, um, that would be another round, right? Whatever left over. Uh, we can't really do this, but like, let's just say for the sake of it, we could subtract the last one, right? This would take three rounds, right? This whole thing would take three rounds. Whereas if I just, instead of subtracting twos every time, I subtract three. Right, so if I take five and I remove three, remove three of these fours first, I would have two left, and that'll be just one round. And if I remove another three first, let's say for the sake of it, we can, okay, then that'll be another round. And then here we would get, we would have a total of two rounds. Okay, so it's much if, if we want to min minimum minimize the number of rounds we take, we should remove as much as possible, right? Do you, do you guys understand? <clears throat> like if we want to minimize the amount of rounds it takes to, to get rid of all these values, we want to remove as much as many values as possible from the array first, right? So that's why it's mo most optimal to remove three, three tasks of the same kind first and then remove two when we can't remove three, okay? So that's basically the gist of the greedy algorithm, okay? So we're just gonna keep removing three tasks of the same kind first, and then remove two, okay? So um, what, in what situation can we not remove three though? Um, and that, if we can't remove three if we don't have three, right? So in, let's say we have, um, in this case, the number three here, these two threes, I can't remove three here because I'll get negative, right? 
Like, they don't want us to, like, we, like we can't remove three if we don't have three, right? They said we, it must be the difficulty of tasks. You, you have to remove either two or three tasks. So if we don't have enough threes, then we can't remove it, okay? So that's 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 what we have to do. Um, so yeah. So in what other case can we not remove threes? Um, let's say it was like like uh, even. So let's say we had um, so in this case a four, right? Let's say this four was not here. So let's just let's just ignore one of the fours. So let's let's ignore this last four, right? Let's 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 assume this was like four uh, regular value of four. So in this case, um, if I remove three here, I'm gonna have a last a value of one, and I can't remove three again, right? So I'm not gonna be able to remove all the values, all the fours here, right? I can't just remove three and then minus three again. So in this case, what I only could do is just remove two first, because then that'll be one round, and then I'll get two left over, and then I have to remove another two, so then I get zero, and then that'll be another round, so then I would have a total of two rounds, right? So in situations where I can't remove three, um, there are certain situations where you cannot remove three. So yeah, um, in this case, you only can remove two, okay? So yeah, uh, so how do you do this problem? Um, the most basic way is uh, after we build our frequency table, I'll show you guys the code. Um, yeah, so after you build our frequency table, um, we first have to check if, uh, any of the values of our frequency table is less than two. And the reason why is because in our second case right here, two, three, three, if, uh, any of the value, uh, for two, three, three, since the frequency of two is just one, we can't remove, uh, we can't remove this two out because we don't have enough, right? So the answer would just be minus one here, right? Because there's not enough twos to remove. We only can remove three of the kind, same kind or two of the same kind. So in this case, two is just by itself a one. So we can't remove three of them or two of them because we just don't have enough to remove. So in our case, if any of our frequency that we have is less than two, like in this case, we have to return negative one. So yeah. Um, here I use an unordered map uh, dictating the frequency of all the values that we have here. So two, three, four, I build a frequency table of this. Um, you could use, you could use, uh, in Python, you could use dictionary. In JavaScript, I don't know what it is. Um, you could try to use an array, but an array would, you have to build like a gigantic, super large array. If you want to do that that way but yeah so here I, I build my frequency by going through every single tasks and for each value at the certain task i add by one and that builds up my frequency array or frequency table now i'm going to loop through my frequency table and if any of the values are less than two i return negative one and the reason why like i said before is that it, they have to have they have to we have to have enough that of enough for the same kind to remove it, right? So if it's just one or two, uh, if it's just one or zero, then we can't really remove it, right? So that's why if my frequency of whatever number is less than two, I just return negative one. Okay, this is the part where it starts getting tricky to understand, but yeah, okay, um, I'll just explain it. So let's say we have, uh, I'll explain the first case. So let's say we have Let's say we go look at two, okay? And um, if the number two, since it's three, if if our number is like divisible by three, it's most optimal to just keep subtracting by three every single time, right? Like I like how I explained earlier in the video. So yeah, if it's if it's divisible by three, then we should actually subtract by three every single time. So let's say this, uh, let's say the frequency of two is not um, not three, but like nine-ish or something. Let's say this was nine, okay? Let's say the frequency of two was nine. In our case, it's better to just keep subtracting by three over and over again 
because then we'll, in the end, we'll get to zero, right? Because it's divisible by three. So while it's divisible by three, um, we could just keep sub subtracting by three every single time. So what is the difference? If I take a number and keep subtracting by the same number over and over again, uh, what is the equivalent of that? Um, simple, it's the same thing as di dividing, right? So if I take nine, I keep subtracting by three over and over again. Uh, how many times am I subtracting by three? Well, I'm subtracting by three, three times, right? So for each of these frequencies, we could just like, if we want to count how many times we're subtracting by three, uh, we just have to divide it by it. So let's say there were the frequency, let's say the frequency of nine was nine. All we have to do is nine divided by three will give us three. And this would be the count of how many threes there are that we subtract from every single time. And this would be like the number of rounds that we take, right? So yeah, so that's what I do in the first part of the for loop. So if, if my, the free, if the, so I go through every single value in my frequency, if it's divisible by three, right? If it's divisible by, by three, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, um, add the frequency of it divided by three. Okay. So rounds plus equal to frequency of it divided by three. So like in this case, let's say we have two or three, I'll just divide by three and give me one and that'll be the number of rounds it, it took, right? It was, it was just one round to get rid of all the twos here. Okay. So then that'll be plus equal one to the rounds. So yeah. So while it's greater than zero, I just divide it by three. Um, and I add number of rounds. And then here, I just get the remainder of it because I want this while loop to end. So if I take the remainder of three divided by three, it'll give me zero. So then I just basically reset my frequency of this three is gonna become zero, right? Because here, if I got rid of three of these twos, it's gonna become zero. Like in the end, after we remove all the twos, it will become zero. Of three of these, it becomes zero. So yeah, I just mod mod equal by three, and then this would this four this while loop would become zero. Uh yeah, the frequency would become zero, and the while loop ends here. So yeah, this is a, that's the first case. The first case is if it's divisible by three, then we could just keep subtracting by three over and over again. Okay. All right. Here's the part where it gets a little tricky. All right. So. The part that gets tricky is if we're there's certain cases where this starts getting tricky. So let's say I'm at, let's say I'm trying to remove values of four. Okay. Well, if I just subtract by three, right. Um, for four, if I just subtract by three, that'll be one round. Right. So I got rid of three of these fours. And then I have two left, right? In here, I can't subtract three again, but I could subtract two. So I could just subtract two and then I end up with zero. And then I got rid of these and I got plus one. That'll be another round. And then in the end I would have two and then number four has become zero. Okay, so that's, this is an easier, e easier way, right? This is like an easier example. But what if we have a different example? So let's say we had, I don't know, eight fours. This is a part where it gets really tricky. So let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So in this case, we have eight fours. So number of fours here is eight. The frequency of four is eight. So if I take eight and I just keep subtracting by three as many times as possible, so it's essentially just dividing by three, right? So if I take eight and divide by three, what is eight divided by three? Uh, two, six, two. Okay, so it will give me two. So we're gonna remove two of these eights. So it'll be one, two, three, right? And then we subtract one, two, three. And that'll be another, um, that we removed right so we had 
four of these were removed, so that would be one round. And then another four of these were removed, so that's another round. So we had we, we, uh, we had two rounds. We took two rounds to remove those. Then I have something left over. I have two left over, and I can't subtract by three anymore. So I have to subtract by two, right? So here I would just subtract by two, and this would be gone. So then two minus two would be zero. And then I would have to have another round plus one here. So then I would have three rounds, okay? So that, that's the gist of this part, but so that's a harder example, right? So you might be thinking, okay, so if, if I want to get rid of like threes, if I want to get rid of all these values, simple ways to divide by three and then try dividing by two afterwards, because that'll get me the answer to this problem, right? Divide by three, divide by two. Um, it's much harder than that, actually, because let's say we had, let's say instead of fours, instead of eight fours, let's say we had 12 fours, or maybe, maybe not 12. Um, what was that example I used? Uh, 11 fours. No, no, ten, uh, seven fours. Seven fours. Okay, so let's say I had seven fours. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we have seven fours here. In this situation, it is much harder because. So if I have seven fours, if I take seven divided by three, I'm going to get. Um, two, right? So then I remove uh, three of these twice. So here, this would be one round, right? And I remove another three of these twice. So be another round. So that gave me two, but I have a four left over, right? So I couldn't, I didn't remove all the fours here. I have one, one left over, right? So you might be wondering, okay, if I have one left over, I can't actually remove these values. So that's the thing is that instead of, we can't actually remove three twice in this case. It's much more optimal. Our optimal case would actually be to remove three once. So we have seven, right? Um, I'm going to remove three once. So I do this, right? So then our seven minus three become four. And then from four, I could just remove four twice. Right, so I just have to remove four twice. So I could do um, four minus two would give me two. So so here, after, first we have to remove three, three fours, right? So that'll be one round. Then four minus two, I remove two of these. That'll be another round. So then I have two left over. Then I could do two minus two would be zero. And then all these got values would be gone, and all my fours would be gone, right? So in our optimal value, in this case, we couldn't remove two threes, right? Because then we had one left over. It's much more optimal in our case to actually remove uh, one three and then remove twos at the end, all the values of twos at the end. So um, after doing like a bunch of cases, here's what I found that works best. So let's try to, so first what we should do is we should actually see if we could actually remove it. So, so let's say I take seven, right? So I have seven. What I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by three and this is going to give me two, right? Because, uh, seven divided by three, two, six, one. Okay. So in this case, my remainder is one in this case, right? So what I could do is that I could check if the remainder that I have is not equal to two. Then I just subtract one from how many threes I could get. Okay. So in this case, um, seven divided by three is equal to two. And there's a remainder of one, right? So there's a two remainder one. So because our remainder here is not equal to two, right? Because I could just subtract three every time and then I could subtract two every time, right? So if I have, well, what I want is to have my remainder to be two, 
right? Because then in the end, I could just keep subtracting twos every time. And then, and then I could, then my last value would be zero. So what I could do is to say, hey, if my remainder is not equal to two, I, instead of taking two of these, right, removing three twice, I'm just gonna remove three once. So yeah, so here I, I remove three twice, right? Because seven divided by three is two. This time I'm gonna say seven divided by three. Um, I'm just gonna remove it to be two minus one would be one. Okay, so then I'll be seven minus three will just be one, All right? Times one, which would be one. And this would give me four. And then once I have four, I could just divide it by two every single time. So that's what I do here. So here val is gonna equal to seven divided by three, which is the frequency we have of seven divided by three, which would give me the number of times I could do it. If, if my current value minus val times three is not equal to two, so this is just checking if the remainder of it is. So I basically check if seven times uh, seven minus three times two here. So here I have seven minus three times two. All right, so seven divided by three is equal to two. Then I just take this number two and I put it back into here, into this number here. And I do seven minus three times two, which gives me a remainder of one. And I just check if this is not equal to two, then I just subtract one from my value. So this, this two would, so this one is not equal to two, so I just subtract one from this two, so it just becomes one. And then in my my answer would be four here in the end, right? So yeah, so then I do rounds plus equal to value. So this means rounds plus equal to the number of times I divide by three, so it'll be one, right? Because I divide by three once instead of doing twice. So yeah, rounds would be plus one. Then I just set it equal to the remainder, my frequency table to equal to the remainder I get from subtracting um, val times three. Okay, and then after I set the remainder here, so this remainder would become like four because I subtracted three once, right? So my remainder would be four. Then all I, all I do is I increment rounds of four divided by two. So four divided by two would give me two and that increments rounds would be two. So then my number of rounds would be, um, so it would be one for removing three once and then two for removing two twice for seven. And then, yeah, that rounds would be plus or equal to two. And then here I just like subtract um, what I have left. So then this four would become zero in the end, right? Four minus four would be like zero. So yeah, uh, yeah, that's what I do here. And then it, yeah, so then it comes back to the top and then it continues for the other numbers of the frequency table. And then in the end, I just return number of rounds. So yeah, uh, I hope you guys understood this gist of this problem. This was kind of hard to explain, but essentially what we're doing is we're just getting the remainder, seeing can we, if we can't get two as our remaining value that's divisible by two, then we should uh, we should just decrease the number of threes we subtract, okay? And then we could just keep dividing by two every single time in the end. So yeah, that's basically the gist of the algorithm that I would code it up. It might be an easier way to do this. I don't know. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.